Hello and welcome back. Today we have a guest that might actually need subtitles when he's speaking, but he's a Scottish champ boxing. Hello, Tam. Is that a money? <laughs> so again, the subtitles is because he's Glaswegian. Yeah, probably. <laughs> right, it could be, could be quite bad. I'm speaking a very professional mannerism. <laughs> just How you getting on? Just I'm not too bad, man. Yourself. How's your career so far? Obviously, just newly Scottish champ. How does that feel? Go fantastic to be honest. Can't complain about it. You know what I mean? That's been quite good. Just back to reality. Back to work. Back to training. You know. Nice. Um. So, do you want to dive into a little bit of uh, your background and how you go into boxing and whatever else? So I started boxing probably back in. You're talking probably about primary school time. I started boxing when I was in primary school because I was getting bullied at primary school. Uh, probably done that for maybe a couple of months. A couple of months just to learn how to defend myself just because I was a wee tiny wee Asian boy, you know what I mean? So I had to learn how to fight people. So <laughs> after that, I ended up chugging it. Uh, then go back till probably about third or fourth year in school because I ended up in a fight one time. This guy was, was mouthing off, gave me, gave me all the racist chant because I was beating him at football, which is... Extremely surprising because I'm absolutely terrible at football. <laughs> he was giving me all the, the, the racial grief. So I absolutely ended up piecing him up. And then I remember I came home for obviously playing football. And then my brother says to me, and he was like, that man, uh, you were in a fight. I heard you absolutely pieced him up, whatever. Gave my doing. And I was like, I don't know, I've actually got, I've got hands. I was like, maybe I'll go back. So I ended up going back to the boxing when I was probably in about third to fourth year, must have been about. And it turns out, I was, I was too bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, through to amateur ranks I probably I went to the British a few times box for Scotland uh, I went to the Worlds the Europeans for Scotland boxing a couple of multi-nations here and there and then what's that like? what's uh, that? what's it like um, sort of travelling and boxing with uh, Scotland on your chest? Uh, it feels pretty good you know what I mean represent <laughs> that definitely represents. I remember like being over in like, I think it was Kazakhstan. I remember there was a couple of young boys, but obviously in foreign countries they speak like perfect English, perfect. They like, speak about six languages, and then these wee boys are saying to me, "Where are you from?" And I was with a bunch of boys from Scotland, obviously as well, but they were obviously white. And then I was like, "Scotland? No, no, no. <laughs> where are you from?" And I was like, yeah. "I was like, oh, half Chinese." And they were like, "Oh, okay, okay." <laughs> and then they were understanding. Yeah. So what's it like, sort of, again, pick for these squads and what's the process behind that? Uh, in the amateur background, so just obviously went to a box. Well, I won the Scottish. I uh, got invited into, like, Scottish training. Then you go to Scottish training, then you kind of just pick talent for certain weights. And obviously I was, was pretty good. So I got picked for 54, 54 kilo. I've not seen that in a while right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for people who don't know, what way are you fighting at just now? Right now, I fight featherweight, so that's about nine nine stone on the button, fifty seven kilo. Nice. How do you find getting it down to that weight? Actually, not too bad. Actually, is I usually sit about sixty ish, and then the last oh. always the last. Like it must be just mental. Like you know, there's like a kilo to go, and you're just like, Ugh, I'm dying. <laughs> There's no more, but it's not actually, it's not as bad as you would think. Yeah. So what's the jump like from amateurs to professional now? Uh, I guess there is, a, like, style, stylistic-wise, it's a bit different because when you're an amateur, people are like, oh, you're, you're on your toes, you're boxing the outside, you're looking for clean shots. But see, to be honest, you're always looking for clean shots, right enough. I don't know what I'm talking about, but uh, in the pro programme, people, people tell you, they'll try and sit down your punches, you're trying to, Obviously, take somebody out of there, get to the business end, knock them out, make an early <laughs> night. You know, I want to go to You've got a little bit of experience behind uh, getting people out early. Eh, uh, well, it turns out I've, I've not got pillow hands, prong cracker hands, whatever you want to call them, but eh, uh, pretty, pretty heavy hands, maybe. <laughs> to be fair, that last fight you've just had, which you won the Scottish title, is by far one of the best fights I've ever seen because... You were sort of in there, and you're kind of making it look like he didn't belong there. So, and this, like, I obviously know how much um, psychology played into this fight and how much he was trying to get into your head. Can you sort of 
describe what you were feeling and thinking while he was giving it all big licks. Giving it all the big chat. Eh, I'm quite a chilled out, mellow person, so it, nothing really... Well, at one point, I guess it would get to me. It's, but uh, I felt pretty calm about it. He was giving me all the grief, like, oh, Andy, you shouldn't have won that fight in amateurs. You can't punch. You, I don't know how you've got all these stoppages. But clearly it's for a reason. Maybe it might be the fast <laughs> hands, it might be the power, but it doesn't matter. Clearer than something's happening. <laughs> People are getting stopped. So we're back. Something happened on my end. Um, we're back, so let's keep going. Um. What's the sort of process that you went through to get to where you are just now? So from your pro debut to now? Grafted. Absolute grafted. But, uh, <laughs> now I've always been a hard trainer. I think just putting in the time, putting in the work. And that's it. You can, as much as you believe, you know what I mean? Dream. Dream big. So how many, like with obviously the fights you've had, what sort of challenges have you came up during training camps and sort of, your way of getting into that Scottish title? Uh, so, see, to be honest, I don't even have materialised, to be honest. Like, I actually getting into the Scottish title. I just got, I, I was on holiday there. And then something, yeah, I got a phone call from my promoter. I said, oh, Andrew, you're going to be fighting Jack Turner for the Scottish title. I was like, I better get myself home. <laughs> get myself running. So what was uh, that process like from that call to then training camp and then on the night fighting? Oh, it was, it was right back into it. I swear to God, I must have got off like, when I travelled home from Korea, it must have it was like a whole day's travel, like generally like a whole day's travel. Then I had to drive home from Manchester back up. So I just added to it maybe an absolute goose. And then got home at like say it was like two o'clock, three o'clock in the afternoon, drove home, got home, just kinda tried to stay awake as best as possible. Then the next day I had work. So I went back to work the next day. And then I went back to train the next day, I know. <laughs> What was so, the sleep like after that? Oh, I was absolutely dying, man. I was out cold. <laughs> Literally come home. I was like, I'm not even making dinner tonight. I'm just going to lie in my bed. <laughs> but, uh, no, it was, it was a tough one. It was yeah. tough. Man, then just from there on, it was just like, head down, get to it, get the running in, get the road work in, get the road work yeah. in, get, the, get the, the fitness up, get the engine in, and away we go. Yeah, so how what, what did you do to sort of prepare for that fight. So that one there, obviously, we, we, I think the last time I fought him or even sparred with him, man, must have been a couple of years ago from now, but kind of know the basis for his style. He likes to try and counter punch. My coaches devised like what they think is a game plan, what I should do. So obviously, trying to implement that into training, working on my speed, power, good fitness. The fitness comes from big yourself and Andrew Usher, man. That, <laughs> that kind of that tempo stuff, man, up, up at the, the uni. That's me. Yeah, don't imagine an assault bike and all that. Just like. So, how does that sort of work with your sports training and strength and conditioning and then conditioning? How do you like prepare everything? I don't know. I just throw the gear at some point, man. <laughs> I'm just winging it. Uh, I just try and. Obviously, I try and always get my road work in, in the morning, then work, and then depending on what day it is, I try and plan around. So, say Monday, Wednesday, Friday will be just kind of in the gym, pad work, kind of technical, or maybe some bag circuits in between. Then Tuesday, Thursdays are normally like sparring days, and then Saturday will be like strength and conditioning. And then Sunday's like a rest day or a run or an absolute brutal run up the up big hills or something like that. Just something that people don't want to do. And then in between, shove in them assault bike circuits and that. Yeah. So how do you how do you prepare men- like mentally? Because obviously you're, you're very mental strong in your training. You always like to do the hardest graft. How does that sort of benefit you during these training camps? I just always want the, the hard gear. You never want the easy way. I think mentally, just to push yourself through it, I'm always, I like to just challenge myself. I say, well, what's the worst that could happen? You know what I mean? I'm going to, I'll get to stage one. Oh, well, fuck it. Maybe next time I'll get to next, stage two. I just like to give myself. See when people are like, oh, don't want to do a tough session today. That's what you're needing. That's what mm. you're needing. See me the days when you go, oh, I can't be bothered. That's the days where you're like, let's get in. Let's get more. Yeah. Drag so me. I know that you obviously love David Goggins and listening to him every oh, morning. Oh, some Goggins. <laughs> How does that sort of motivate you every morning to get up and do those runs? Yeah, that's all the thing. They're just powering me through some runs. But actually, I've lost my AirPods in him. 
I've lost my head. I've not even got headphones. I've not got headphones. I lost my AirPods. So recently, I've just been running just pure silence. So David Goggins does talk about that right now. He's like, music is for yes. cheats. I you, they pop mine in, and it's just <laughs> David Goggins book, David Goggins podcasts, David Goggins other book, and then maybe on occasion I might listen to some tunes, but that's usually it. Just in my head, I'm like, yeah. stay hard, Andy, stay hard. Who's going to carry the boats? Who's going to carry boats? And logs! <laughs> um, so... <laughs> <laughs> Pick up sticks. Yeah, me, me. <laughs> Picking up <with> sticks. <laughs> so obviously, as a pro boxer, you you were having to manage your schedule with training, sparring, sort of S and Cs, conditionings, and then you've got media days on top of that. How how do you find going into those media days? Well, right enough, I was actually late. I think I was late for both of them actually. There was like two media days for like, this fight that came up just there, and I think I was late for both of them. But it's because I was at work. So, like, right. when you're at work, I'm like, here, I need a way for this time. And then they're like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. But then, in all reality, jobs drag on and stuff happens. So, I was actually late. But, like, I wasn't actually late late. I think I was, like, 10 minutes late at a push. We'll just say about 10 minutes. But, uh, I, so, yeah, it's quite hard. It can be difficult. It can be difficult sometimes, but... Yeah, so, what is it that you sort of don't like about the media days? I don't know. They are quite fun, to be honest. Right, they're quite fun because obviously he's like that fight there. That he's getting all the he's getting all the chat. Like he's getting all the big licks. He's like, oh yeah, Andy carry punch, blah blah blah. I just like to. I'm just in the presence, absorbing it all up. I'm like on the TV and that on camera. I'm like, <laughs> the lead up to the fight, and then when you're obviously in those rounds. Obviously, I know some of the feelings that you were having during those uh, rounds, but can you sort of go through like your thought process between the rounds and how you found your way around it? So in between the rounds, I was probably, see, to be honest, I right, see after fights sometimes, I can barely even remember what happened. But uh, to an extent, from what I remember, uh, it's just trying to stay calm and then listen to my coaches to obviously take in obviously the information they're trying to give you. Like, obviously, they're watching it from an outside perspective and then I'm seeing what I'm seeing. But obviously, I try and implement the game plan that will obviously be set out to go to go with. So obviously, I'm coming out there the fourth round. What my pl- our plan was is to he's going to try and count on me. He's he's a it's quite a relaxed kind of fighter. He's kind of sitting on the back foot looking for like big shots. So in and out, counter the counter, get him to draw something, come in, get him to draw out, and then back in again. So just trying to work on that in the fourth round. I guess it was quite cagey, and then. Second round, trying to pick it up and then keeping it going. Just trying to stay yeah. mentally aware. Don't don't slack off or if you get caught with something. Yeah. So what was it that your sort of coaches saw? And obviously you've got previous experience fighting them or sparring them. What were they sort of implementing during your training to to combat the combat? <clears throat> eh, speed, I guess. Speed in and out. The kind of foot with the feet. In and out with the feet. Faint the faint, like faint, faint, come back out and then right back in. So it was it like, kind of mainly kind of speed, working on the jab, establishing the jab, get, then he's going to have to try and, I think their plan was kind of, it's like just kind of draw him in. Hmm. But it was quite hard because he was just on the back. He's quite a relaxed fighter. He's got a good style, you know what I mean? He's always looking for big shots, eye catching shots, but. More effective, you know what I mean? Just trying to mm. underwork the work rate and pushing through the paces. I didn't think it would last. Yeah, that was something that I found is like you had a lot higher percentage and sort of work output than he did. Is that something that you use drilled in during training? Yeah, that one was one of the things I think they, one of our coaches was saying is like, oh, he's not got an engine like you, Andy. You're going to have to outwork him. You, you can outpace him, which I do have a good work rate. So I would say, obviously, we try to implement that establish the jab, keep the punches going, obviously then he's going to have to try and keep up with the work rate and then he's going to have to try and come out with more output himself and gas himself. Yeah, 100%. So like during training camps, how much sparring do you actually do in preparation for it? Sparring wise, probably maybe sparring maybe two or three times a week. Three a push-ish, maybe. Uh, two or three times a week. Yeah. Do you feel like that's that helps you getting that sort of reps in towards the fight? So I think sparring is like, 
essential because if you don't spar, then it's not it's not the same. Like you could hit pads for like you hit pads for about twenty rounds, and you wouldn't feel as tired as you would coming out of like a pure hard craft, even just one round. See if you had like a pure one like really 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 tough round that like you're you're both going for it, then it gets you gets you working, gets the lungs working. Like you could be hitting the pads absolutely non stop, full pelt, but somebody's not hitting you back. Then yeah. somebody starts hitting you back, you're like, oh dear. <laughs> stop! Do do you sort of enjoy that aspect of sparring? Is like that feedback from your uh, your opponent at that point? Oh, I think who doesn't love sparring? Sparring is like one of the best bits. Seems you hit somebody and then you're like, oh, that was a crisp shot. You're like, oh, just, you know, there's not better. There's not better than it. hitting somebody or landing like a couple of clean shots. Yeah. Do you get do you get scared if um? Maybe not scared, but wary if you sort of get caught clean and you get concussion before the fight. I never worry about that. I think I, maybe it's just on occasion, like a fear of all time. Like I think for any boxer, though, at one point is to get knocked out. It's like the biggest. Mm-hmm. It's just know that it's yeah, in my challenge. head, but like it's a it's a proper fear. It's like then I've got a chin, so I'm alright so far. Do you do you just stick to the same sort of weight class when you're sparring, or do you go up and down? Give and take, you know what I mean? It's like, some t- some, depends on the styles. I don't think if you're going to spar with somebody that's heavier than you, they're not going to fucking feel belt. You know what I mean? They're not going to be trying to come out there and out, out, mm. blast you the blast you the water, but it just t- depends on the styles. They might bring somebody in from a club who's a big tall rangey boy because you might be fighting someone tall, but they may be heavier, but still s- stylistically wise, and then they'll maybe pop you in with a couple of other people here and there, but to an extent, yeah. So is that what some something that your coaches do a lot? Is like try and match your sparring sessions with someone that's got a similar style to who you're fighting? Well, I would say that actually. But the boy I was fighting there, Jack, is an offer dog, and the boy that I sparred with pretty much the whole way through, Charlie Doig, and I did some rounds with Ricky Burns as well, which was great. Both of them are great fighters. Eh? But Charlie Doig is a southpaw, so right, that was through the windy. So <laughs> take from you well. They'll be like, oh yeah, Andrew, we'll get you spar partners and that. And I sparred with him like many rounds and then he was a southpaw, but... What was it like sparring Ricky Burns? Obviously, he's, a, he's quite oh. a legend there. And... It was good. It was uh, valuable valuable rounds. That you can't you kind of complain when somebody's like a, been a world champion, been around the world, you know what I mean, done it all. So it's just a, it was a good experience. Still solid, man. Yeah. <laughs> Did he sort of give you any tips and wisdom that he passed down during this camp? Uh, yeah, he did. Probably just uh, bits and pieces in, in between sparring and stuff like that. Sparring rounds with him, sparring rounds with Charlie, who's also he, he trained. So uh, good information. Then I was doing a lot of running with him as well. He invited me out and run. Mm-hmm. So it's not as if I was going to say no. I was like, oh, not a problem. So what was those sessions like when obviously he's been around and he's done his fair share of big steps in the boxing world. What was that sort of like getting passed on this key information? It was great. Was soaking up like a sponge. Probably should have wrote it down because my memory's like a sever enough. <laughs> Probably writing it down somewhere so I should remember it. What was, the most memorable year, thing he, what was the most memorable thing that he, like you picked up on while training with him? It's work great though, man. My God, man. Mm-hmm. See, the, see the work great that man has. Man's got an engine. Thank you. Serious engine, man. Like, uh, I, I didn't even believe it, man, when he told me he was 40, but... <laughs> <laughs> My God, man, guy. He was an absolute athlete, athlete. Is there anyone else that sort of came up into your camp that you were maybe not expecting or maybe you've seen them and you kind of wanted them in? Uh, I can think of. See, to be honest, I barely remember what happened yesterday, let like, alone fucking <laughs> in, in, my, in my training camp. <laughs> That's not the box, and that's just me. <laughs> that's not the box, that's just me. Uh, that needs to be a t shirt. That needs to be a t shirt. No, no. In the boxing, <laughs> that's just me. Just in one ear, right there. So, what was it like after winning the title? How did life sort of pick up and change from there? It was, it was pretty good. Uh, it kind of just went back to normal. Like, after the fight, because I don't drink of that, so obviously went home, we watched the fight back, and ate some food and that with my family and they moved for lunch like that the next day and then it was back to the graft almost I had like the so obviously the fight, the fight was on the Friday chilling out Saturday, Sunday Monday 
and went back to work on the Tuesday. So it was just like back to reality. <laughs> then back to training on Wednesday. I did go down I, on Monday just to see the wee guys and that, but that was about yeah. it. So I saw you before your training camp. So obviously we spoke a lot about food and sort of what we like to do after for a big fight and something like that. What was your first uh, meal after your boxing fight? I didn't get my KFC. Didn't get my KFC. Mm. My go-to is always KFC, mate. I didn't get it. What's your I order? Think... What was that? What was your order? What? No, I didn't get it. No, I no, but like, what KFC? would be your usual order? Oh, my, my order. Probably a wicked zinger meal. Extra hot wing. Mm. Two extra hot wings and all, man. Just That's a classic. Or else maybe some chicken on the bone. But but yeah, you can't be a wee zinger meal. I used to go for the burritos after a judo fight. And oh, they... the flaming wraps? Oh. Yes. No, 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 the burritos. The burritos. They used to do burritos. <laughs> and yeah, and they were amazing. So it had like rice, chicken, beans. I like uh, a rice box, actually. Love mm. them. You didn't have a rice box. Can you have a rice box? Yeah, so what did you actually have? What did I actually have? I, actually, I went back to my sister's house and I had instant noodles, mate. But right enough, my dad would say, oh, any, I think my sister made like, as if you know who that is, but my sister, she made bolognese. I think it was like the day before. And then obviously there was some spare bolognese. Noodles. My dad made like just instant noodles with like Tom Kotsu ones or something like spicy ones. And he was like, oh, we'll put some some spaghetti bolognese on top. It was like the weirdest combination. It was actually pretty good though, because I was probably starving for that. Enough, but it was just a weird combination. It was like, they were just, it was a weird one, but they were tasty. <laughs> they were good too. Yeah. So after, can you sort of go through? Obviously, you mentioned that you still work and you're a professional boxer. Can you sort of explain how that works in the boxing world? Yeah, so I guess a lot of fighters, like nobody's nobody's got that many sponsors where you could probably go full time. So some people maybe could if they've got a lot of good sponsors and stuff like that. But obviously, supply like food, your rent, mortgage if even, and then you've still got your training and then you might not be fighting that often, so you've still got, say, you get one good payday, then you've still got all this stuff to pay for, like, and you're not maybe fighting for another six, six, seven months, or maybe even two months, because I was out for two and a bit years, I never even knew until they told me, like, like not they told me, but I heard it on, like, the, watching it back, it was like, Andrew was out for, like, two years and eight months, I was like, damn, I was out for that long, didn't feel it, I'm still training. So why were you off for those two years and eight months? Don't have a damn clue. <laughs> uh, I think uh, in between, like, obviously, certain fights, uh, I might have picked up like an injury, so I end up pulling out or something like that. Maybe I, I remember one time I did, uh, I did hurt one of my shoulders, uh, and then I hurt one of my hands as well at one point. And then I end up with the mumps actually, bef- just before COVID, mm. I was supposed to fight. I end up with the mumps, I end up like a pure frog. My neck went pure chubby as hell. I was like, and where else? But that's about it, really. So just yeah. kind of not well, then just back to it, I guess. Yeah. How's it like coming back after hand injuries? And I guess as long as you do like proper recovery. But I think if you're a boxer, everybody's got sore hands at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Everybody's. It's just. <laughs> it's just a part of it. That's it. So. Oh, I can't fight. I've got sore hands. As it were. Everybody's got sore hands unless it's properly like, hurt, hurt. Then. I guess you've got to deal with it. Yeah, so what's the recovery process for you with any type of injuries? I'm not too sure. I don't really get injured that often, to be honest. Well, I don't think I do. Maybe I do, but I forget about them. Probably if it's a proper series, if it was like a hand injury, I would probably still tick over and probably run a lot. And then if it was like, I don't think I've hurt anything below my legs. Punching Just keep maybe. running. And we're back again. So we were sort of speaking off camera while we came back. Um, Have you got any upcoming fights or... Anything planned? Uh, upcoming fights. I'm fighting again on November 3rd. November 3rd in Alawa. So how does that sort of come about, you getting fights? or Obviously, you've got a title now. Is it defence? Is it? So the one coming up now is, I don't even know if it's a defence or it's just a regular fight because they pretty much just said to me, it might be, it might be this, it might be that. I don't have a clue. Barely, clearly nobody tells me nothing. Maybe it's just going to carry Maybe maybe they don't want to tell me because I'll end up blabbing it or something like that. I just want to keep it hush hush. But to my knowledge, eh, I'm not 100% sure on what it is. It's just, I'm just going to say it's going to be a, a regular fight and then they're hoping for the next one after it 
maybe try and push me on something else. So um, like a maybe a progression for a Celtic mm. title or something along those lines, you know. Yeah. Can you explain what a regular fight is compared to a sort of title defense? Well, see, to be honest, I'm saying regular fights as if like any fights. So you, I guess they're all regular fights, but uh, pretty much, I think they're just talking about like a see it was like a six round fight eight round fight against somebody and just because obviously the boy needs to be scottish for it to be a scottish mm-hmm. title defense you know what i mean so that's what i mean by regular fight as if like i'm a pure pure champion in that now i'm like <laughs> i swear it regular fights and that you know but i'm just uh just you know what i mean just a fight yeah so it i guess in this case if it's not a scottish fighter it would be a, a regular fight if it was someone scottish then it would be a defense fight technically yeah yeah and then yeah. i think they're hoping after that push me on to it maybe try and get something else get into the celtic title or something like that, you know can you explain what that is compared to the scottish title what's that sorry so what's the difference between a scottish title and a celtic so celtic includes like ireland and that didn't it ireland and wales so that's like Celtic then pushing the hand, pushing the top ten of the, the British in Britain. Right. Like it's a fighter, and then obviously then there's a British and then European world. Yeah. So the them. progression essentially for you would be Scottish, Celtic, British, and then world. Is that how it sort of works? Or European. Yeah. Well, I don't really think it doesn't really apply to everybody because you see some people like they just skip things. I don't think there's re- there is a progression to an extent like as a, like a development of a fighter but somebody could just like jump from one to another or they could just jump right into look at look well Lomachenko is an exception I guess but I uh, the same fight jumping in a world title fight you know what I mean like you can do anything you wanted I guess as long as they offered you yeah so what would be your ideal next fight yeah my ideal next fight that's a good question I don't actually know I just uh I just like to fight man I'm just here for the I'm here for the fighting but uh, I'm hoping, I would hope, uh, even if this one is just like a kind of a regular, not a regular fight, you know what I mean? I keep saying regular as if like, say this one is just a fight, and then maybe... I think that's a good mentality to have, though, is just think of them as regular fights. Because then... Well, they are all, always... I guess at the end of the day, they're all regular, but hopefully, I'm hoping to then progress, and hopefully they'll get me like a something, something tasty. Maybe get a wee tasty, tasty wage, you know, you know? <laughs> So yeah, what would be your sort of ideal next step, like fight wise? Uh, I would hope for maybe, maybe kind of getting into the looking for like a Celtic title or something like. That. Just trying to you don't want to jump too fast because technically everybody's still learning at the end of the day. So I'd like to get in a couple of fights in, maybe one then a Celtic and then mm. see where we progress from there. See if it gets thrown in the mix. Not as if anybody would tell me they would just tell me that oh Andy, you're fighting such and such. Okay. <laughs> so, good. so how does that work with your promotion? How does that, how do they sort of find your fights and then um, sort of pull, pull you forward for them? Oh, I don't have a clue. That's a yeah, I don't have a clue. Uh, I'm assuming there is some sort of process in there, but I, I have, maybe it won't, may, maybe now they'll come to me and be like, Andrew, what do you think about this? But I don't know. I just yeah. like, it, I'm just, you just I'm rock up. Fight. Show up I'm and show just, up. I'm just here to rock up in the night. Somebody tell me the way and what time and place. I'm trained for it. Nice. I like that mentality, though. That's actually something that we sort of connected on. And that's, I think, that our first session was obviously, I'm a very vocal coach. Yes. And I think you sort of drew to that. What was, what's like the thing that you look for in your coaches? I feel like somebody's going to push you. But yeah, that's what, I think that's why me and you got along so well because uh, obviously we met through the uni and I think a good coach is somebody that's going to push you as far as you can go. Like some people are going to give up, certain people give up at like 10%, you know what I mean? So when I was pushing and I think it may have been the bike at that point, even in the running as well and the arm one, the, I remember just, the bike one, I remember essentially it was like, come on Andy, dig, 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 dig. And I was just like, was like oh Andy, you've got more, you've got more. And you're like, you're like, I've got more. <laughs> you know, you're like, even though I'm dying and saying I was like, oh, I've got nothing. But you're like, come on, Andy, I know you've got more. And I was like, oh, okay. Take <laughs> clear away, grafting. No, that is something I like to say to everyone because everyone does have more in their tank than what they think. 
so by having someone shouting at you saying like you've got more in that tank let's fucking push it so how that how like in your head at that time what sort of goes through your head when you're getting told you've got more in there let's go well i'm thinking i'm thinking you know what you're right i'm just saying most of the time see if somebody even said oh andy that's you or enough you'd probably chuck it out if they were like hi andy that's you you'd be like hi all right then but uh, i think it's it's something you need because sometimes sometimes people do want to give up you know what i mean they're in their head mm. they're like oh i'm just waiting but i feel i'm always I'm always striving for the best. I'm always wanting to dig that wee bit deeper. I'm like, you know, Andy, you've got, you've got it, you've got it. Come on, keep it. And then we're like, the, was somebody saying that to me as well? I'm like, I, you're right, I do. <laughs> I think as well. Sometimes a lot of people watch the clock, and that's the worst yeah, thing that you can right. do. <laughs> that's true. So I think right. I can't remember if you would, but anytime that someone starts looking at the clock, I either cover it or I'm just like, stop looking at that clock. You. You've got more in there. Let's let's push. Stop that one. <laughs> yeah, cheat. In preparation for your fights, like obviously you've got your coaching team. How much tape is watched on your opponent, and how much of that preparation takes into effect? So for me personally, I don't really watch much. Well, I do watch boxing, but I don't really watch much tape on my opponents. Uh, I do watch it. Like you're not saying I don't watch it like pure religiously, like because I don't. But but I will watch maybe one or two of their fights. Can I maybe try and look at something that I could maybe pick a flow in? But pardon me. And again, there's like hiccups here. <laughs> but my coaches normally, uh, they they watch a lot of their the, lot of the, the my opponent's fights, and they'll be like, "Oh, Andrew, I think he's got a lazy left hand or something like that, or he's got a lazy he's got a lazy hand." So I think you could maybe jab up top, jab down low, and he'll bring it maybe his backhand down, loop over the top or something like that. You know what I mean? So they'll pick up things. They'll be like, "Oh, Andrew." After he throws it a one two, he's he puts his hands down. So mm. after he throws a one two, just jump in, just things like that. They just they might come out, they'll come out with small hands and blow. Oh, he's got a lazy left hook, come over the top. Yeah. So. so how does that then translate into sort of the work that you do in the gym? So they most of the time they end up on the pads, just be drilled. You're you're getting drilled certain combinations and on pads. You'll get get drilled. All right, oof, okay, because working on a double jab backhand or something like that, boom, 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 and then variate it up, up, low, back up, or up, low, low, and then just kind of try and drill them, just trying to work on it, just so you, because if you don't do it on the pads and the bags, it's not as if you're going to bring in spar, mm. you know, so it's kind of, I guess you got to try and get it into your head so you actually do it. Yeah, and then how much of that, what are they saying in between these training sessions to you, like, how are they pushing you to get these sort of things automated into your head? Well, if it's Johnny, man, that guy's always giving me grief, no matter what. He's always <laughs> just giving me grief. You obviously didn't meet Johnny, you met Francie. Yeah, uh, I met Francie. Johnny's just always giving me grief. Big man's just like, coming back. Close. Even in that fight there, I think it was, a, was it the third round? Aye, so the third round, I dropped him, right? Hmm. And I dropped the boy, and I came back after that round. And obviously it was on TV and he was, uh, he was kind of suspicious, uh, just in case, like, the cameras could hear. So he came, I came in close, man, and he goes, ah, like, this is me, boy. So I, this is me, and he comes in and he's like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I was like, what are you talking about? And he was like, what the fuck was that? He was like, you fucking had him away, and you let it go. And I was like, I was like, no winning. Because last time he was like, oh, you jump in. Uh, and you got yourself caught with like a, a shot. He was like, "So just stay calm and kind of work your way, what work, work your way in, pick the shots and look for them. Don't just pure load up and come out swinging." And then he said, "Aye, he was gone. He was like, you should have, you should have jumped on him.'" I was like, "Well, there's no winning. If I jump on him, you're gonna complain for jumping him. If I don't jump on him. I should have jumped on him. There's no yeah, winning." So what what's those conversations like in between rounds for that fight? Well, I just listen. I don't really. I want to know I'm gonna turn around and go. Hey, what are you talking about? <laughs> you, told me to do it. you know what I mean? So I'm just like, okay, just trying to take my, my nice deep breaths, control my breathing, get a wee bit of water, take in what you're saying. If you're saying, oh, you're not doing this enough, try this. I think this will work. Then I'll obviously try and implement it and I'll go out in the start of the round and we'll try and establish it. Like, see if he says, establish the jab a bit better, take the center of the ring. Then obviously that's what you're going to try and implement. So yeah, I do take on his advice, but sometimes he's just a. He's just a madman. He just likes to complain to me. He's never got anything good to say. <laughs> That's a good point, though, because 
you did drop him in the third round, and then on the sixth round, which that's when you put him put him away. What sort of I'm guessing that's why you lunged forward after him after he connected those two. Yeah, that's what my coaches all say though. So all my coaches are like, "Oh, Andrew, you're too nice." And I'm saying, "Well, would you hold me? I'm this. That's just me." They're like, "No, you're too nice. You got to have that. You got to have that mean streak in that energy. You got to have that mean streak." And I was like, "I was like, in the ring, I wouldn't say I'm nice. You know what I mean?" <laughs> like, oh, no. But I seen that he was away, so obviously I tried to jump on him. Maybe that's what they're trying to tell me. Like, oh, Andrew, you've got to be more, more aggressive. So maybe, maybe, maybe that's what, why I done it. Who knows? Don't know. I was thinking. I was thinking. I'm gonna smack him. <laughs> Can I have to help him now? And he, but uh, he, uh, where was I going? We can we can watch it back. Let's watch it back. That's true. Right, we'll watch it back. Here we go. Here we go. Top of the air, man. Wasn't it? It's not been buzzing. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously that is something that you implemented after your sort of coach told you to be a little bit more aggressive. What were your thoughts during those that combination? Well, when it happened the first time and it hurt him. Yeah. I was just thinking, oh, I better put my weight now. <laughs> yeah, run down. Uh, I, uh, so when I hurt him and I seen him like fall back and I was like, what's well, time? It's time for a big, a big shot now. <laughs> uh, no, it, I think it, maybe maybe his voice was in my head. Oh, Andy, stop being, stop being too nice. Stop being nice. And I'm like, I'm nice to an extent. <laughs> That's that's something that we sort of heard right at the beginning of that um, commentary is that he obviously said that he was going to put you away on the sixth round. How does it sort of how did that impact and how does it feel it happening the reverse? So you put him away on the sixth round. I don't know. See, to be honest, I've probably forgot that he even said he was going to put me in the sixth round. But see, him watching it back, and then obviously when it comes up to like the B previews, sixth round, I've gone. And then I put him in the sixth round. That's just, it's just, what do you call it? It's karma, I guess. It's just <laughs> sweet, sweet nectar. <laughs> so did did that sort of obviously it didn't have much of an impact on you? But what was your thoughts when you did what he said he was going to do to you? I just relish in the glory. <laughs> but uh, no, it was a, uh, it was quite nice to be honest. It was because obviously he was getting all the. He's actually, he's, he's all right, he's a nice guy, so I must kind of feel good for him, but he's mm. great for me. Yeah, that's another okay. thing that obviously I've spoke to you about, was the bias that the commentary was towards him. How does that sort of make you feel now watching that back? Oh, it's lovely. Because uh, obviously, the Alex Arthur, fucking great boxer and all, but uh, he must have, I think he trained with Alex Arthur for a bit, so obviously he knows him. So obviously he's gonna pick him up, you know what I mean? He's blown yeah. up. Oh, he can punch. Oh, he's he's a good boxer. He's a good counter puncher. Which, uh, and all truly right, yes, but just better, you know. Smoke you there. But now yeah, that next time we'll be like, oh, and the time's great. And the time you pass that. This time I'll, I'll get a wee bit, a wee bit, a bit of glory. Yeah. Oh, please. There was a clear switch between sort of them talking about how great he was to then him being ineffective and then you coming out on top, does that sort of make you feel a certain type of way when you hear that back? Not really, to be honest. I'm not. But it's just, it's quite nice because they're like, oh yeah, he's really effective. He's got big, big heavy hands. And it didn't even matter. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I've got it in the bag. That's what I said to that. I was like, I had it in the bag. I think I said that in the interview. I was like, they're like, oh, because you won the amateurs and that. Did you think that gave you an edge? I was like, nah. I had it in the bag to begin with. Didn't even matter. <laughs> How was it sort of being under, obviously, a legendary fight at the end? It's madness, to be honest. I still can't believe it. I was going me in a vein. I, was, I remember, I think I got, I think I got told maybe two or three weeks before, like, obviously, the, the fight, and they're like, oh, Andy, you're going to be going me in a vein. And I was like, didn't ask you think it was going to be me. You know what I mean? I was like, is it really? And then it was. But I can't complain. Yeah, what I mean, do for me? Yeah, like that was an amazing sort of coming event. Obviously, the the main event was what it was. It was a brilliant fight. Yeah. But sort of coming as an undercard from that, not an undercard, a coming event. What was sort of the outcome of that? Obviously, we saw your interviews and all that stuff afterwards. How does that feel? Uh, so 
I think I've been recognised maybe like twice, which was quite nice. I think the first time I got recognised, I think it was like the day after. I think I was driving. I think I was going. Uh, I don't know where I was going. I was driving anyway. I was at the roundabout near, near my bit and Craig uh, Lynn just parked at this roundabout, obviously waiting in the lights. And then somebody was driving round and then they seen me and then they were like, "And that was it." <laughs> that was it. So and then one time somebody noticed me and like, yeah, I was like. I think I was working up the fort or something like that, in Glasgow Fort, yeah. so I was working up there, and then somebody was like, oh, see you in the TV, well done, sir. And I was like, oh, thanks very much. <laughs> it was it. See that big man? I can't <laughs> the TV. But uh, nah, nah, it's been good, though. Yeah. What was sort of the interview process is like after the fight? Obviously, you came up straight off the ring and into an interview. What was that like? I mean, I was absolutely missing. <laughs> see, to be honest, probably nobody should be asking me a question. I remember I came straight to the BBC. Like, uh, well, straight out, and then the wee BBC woman was like, Oh, hi, Andrew. I'm I barely remember. She was like, Oh, I'm Cassandra, whatever her name was. And then she was like, You're about to go live on the BBC, so don't swear. And I was like, Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> I swear all the time, man. I think I've sworn a couple of times, but I've been trying to keep it keep it low, try not to swear as much. But the Glaswegian the accent play, hides it. The fear, the fear. I had the fear, and I was like, Oh, dear Lord. They're like, Oh, so how did you feel, Andrew? And I was trying to, I was trying to think of like pure sophisticated big words because they were like, "How do you feel?" And I wanted to go, "I wasn't, oh, I feel great." <laughs> but I was like, "I feel ecstatic." <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm trying to think of pure fancy words in my head, like, "Oh dear, what's a, what's a real, real nice word to say?" Like, <laughs> I feel like ecstatic. Uh, probably in the dictionary that day before I went in. I was like, "Okay, <laughs> that sounds nice, ecstatic." What sort of like? The next steps that you have planned for, so your career. Sorry, man. <laughs> Pierre made a funky noise. My brother's <laughs> gaff. Because uh, we did try to do this interview before, and it turned out terribly. Because me and my absolute terrible internet. Getting about, I swear to God, I checked it like eh, the other day, and I think I was getting like four, four megabytes or something. It was like sixteen hours for a bit. Four is probably a bit excessive, but yeah, it was t- terrible. But uh, what were you saying? Sorry. No, I was just going to ask like. What's the next moves for you? Like, where do you hope to be in sort of a year or two? I want to push as far as I can go, to be honest. I'd like to I'd like to hope I could get to world level, you know? So, train as hard as I can. Always grafting, take on fights. See where we go. Yeah. Actually, that's a good point. Like, you previously mentioned that the way that people go full-time with boxing is through sponsorships and all that stuff. How is it going, getting about, like, getting sponsors and whatnot to sort of help you through the fight camps? I don't have a bloody damn clue. I just pop it in like my wee Instagram bits. I'm like, oh, you want to sponsor me? I was like, just hit me up with a wee DM or something. But uh, yeah, I don't actually really know. But uh, a lot of my sponsors, like, what is it? That one's not really there anymore. But there's a couple that <laughs> should be on my team. Uh, they are great companies uh, just helping helping out somebody that's local. Or if anybody does want to sponsor me, man, just feel free. <laughs> Find me on Instagram, Facebook, I don't know. Find my number. Get off, Manny. <laughs> Give me a phone call back here, Andrew. We want to help you. And I'll be like, not a problem. That's his Instagram. And the time one. Somebody give me a call. Somebody give me <laughs> somebody give me some money. There's a title as well. Yeah. What's it what's the feeling like after holding that title up? Oh, was it? Uh, it was it was great. But uh, I remember like the guy after the fight was just he was like, Oh, you want the belt? And I was like, Oh, I have he's a belt. Yes, thank you for going with that. So even when I came to the interview, the woman was like, oh, I can't remember what she said. She said, oh, it was great, blah, blah, blah. How did you feel? I was like, how did you buzz to be on the TV? You know what I mean? <laughs> I, was, I wasn't even kidding. So I was just, just, just excited, you know? Yeah. No, like, obviously, we have watched your sort of career for the past year or so. And it has been sort of amazing. And we've always went back and forward and just sort of shared some tips and whatnot. It was lovely having you on, Andy. Um, obviously, thank you for doing this interview. Do you want to show your sponsors and Instagram and all that? They are really good to me, to be honest. Like, I've got loads of great sponsors, but they really do help me out. Big Derek Skinner for the club, Skinner Constructions. Johnny Rayman helped me out. My company at the moment, VWS. Shout out to them. Great company, lovely people. Hashtag here, my, my auntie Jenny. You know what I mean? Right there. Hashtag here. She starts me with all my free haircuts, you know? <laughs> you know? 
can I, can I be a wee fresh time right after game one this weekend? So don't move my head around. I'll send you a picture. You can just like edit it on my wee head. Uh, big Julie for the club, Julie Kavanagh, uh, therapies, massages, yourself, Manny. Well, thank you. Can I, mate, can I, can I thank you enough? You came out, fight me, help me out, we bad mobility, we we rubbed there in that, you know what I mean? Uh, armed security as well, North Fire Security Company, Mac Tylan, they've always been helping out, and then one of my new ones, Reload Prep. Clearly, the TV hang was good. Yeah. But we we sponsored it. They they helped me out with like uh, meal prep and that. So yeah, weekend's gonna be gonna be great. <laughs> so is that something that came straight after the fight? That meal prep? Pretty much, yeah. They end up messaging me. When did they message me? I think it was a couple of days later. They you know, congratulated me about my fight. Mm. And I was like, oh, thanks very much. Oh wait, there's one I forgot. In Spa Scotland, Big Joe, Big Joe from Spa Scotland. But uh, probably something's gonna pop in my head, and I'm like, Manny. Can you edit this in? Because uh, <laughs> uh, I totally forgot about them. Um, what was I saying? Sorry, I forgot mid sentence. I was clearly distracted. Uh, meal by prep. Me. Oh, meal prep. Oh, yeah. I they messaged me like, after my fight, congratulating me, and I was like, "Oh, thanks very much." And I was like, "Oh, I was like, maybe, maybe I can message you later on when I'm coming up for an off fight, and just because mm. it, it would help." To be honest, like getting a uh, yeah, getting news and that made, and I was like, maybe we could do something. They were like, "Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll sponsor you," and I was like. Phew. Not a problem. Free food. <laughs> <laughs> Greedy man. No, but no, great company. And the food has been absolutely fantastic so far. I had this like, kind of porridge one the other day, and I'm telling you, it was the business end. No, we, we spoke about it because obviously I know that you got a sponsorship from them after the fight. And the, the sort of meals that you're putting up on your Instagram are real tasty. They, real, they look real tasty. <laughs> There's also another one, mate. See, one time if you come down, because we're going to have to get another session in sometime soon or else I'll come up. Hey, oh, this pancake one. Deadly. Deadly. <laughs> Deadly. Honest to God. <laughs> Clearly, I'm all oh, about the sweeties, you know what I mean? Cup of tea in the morning. And there's me and my wee kinder porridge thing or cup of tea in the weekend. I, I saved the pancakes and that for like the weekend. I'm like, oh, yeah. Eat pancakes in the morning. But, oh, they're so good. Yeah, so is that something that you save for the weekends? Is your little treat? No, I guess you save it because then I get to... See, getting up for work and that, then you have mm. to get up early. But then the weekend, I'm like, tell me that I run whenever I really want. I still like to get up early and run, but I could get up, run, and then come home, and then sit back in bed. Most of the time, I'll make a wee cup of tea, sit in, in bed, and eat some, eat some breakfast, tasty mm. pancakes and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Four is probably just porridge or something like that, something crap, but now I've got, I've got the good gear. Oh, that's perfect. Um, Thank you so much, Andy. Cheers, Manny. Peace. <laughs>